things, uh, a really staple of the blue zone diets that, that have been researched extensively, powerhouse of nutrients in there as well. And again, they've got around a 7% drop in mortality for every 20 grams eaten. So think about it. If your average menopause is at 52 and you've got till 80, that's another 30 plus years, potentially, that's how, that's almost half a lifetime. That's, that's huge. It's a huge amount of time and it's a massive possibility for you to start doing something amazing for yourself. Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where health junkies get their weekly fix of tips, tools, and techniques to have limitless energy, sharp minds, and fit physiques for life. Hey, health junkies. On this episode of the Health Fix Podcast, I'm interviewing Nikki Williams. She's an award-winning nutritionist, author, speaker, host of the Happy Hormones Podcast, and she's a leading expert in women's health. And in fact, she's the founder of Happy Hormones for Life, where she's helping women of all ages rebalance their hormones and reclaim their health. And this all started after Nikki found that she was going to the doctor and she wasn't really being understood when it came to her hormone imbalances. And she was given a prescription for Prozac and sent on her way, which unfortunately is a common thing that happens. Now Nikki's moved into menopause and she she's moved on from her book, about It's Not You, It's Your Hormones, her perimenopause story. And now she's moved on to her new book, Life After Menopause. I haven't interviewed anyone on Life After Menopause. I have no experience in Life After Menopause. I am in perimenopause as it stands. My only experience is working with patients that are going through menopause. And there's definitely a change that happens in terms of symptoms and hormone shifts. And so Nikki's going to talk about it today. She's going to give you a fun, exciting podcast where we talk about all kinds of things that you might not have thought about when it comes to shifts in your hormones and how life after menopause really is about aging well. So let's introduce you to Nikki Williams. Nikki Williams, welcome to the Health Fix Podcast. Thank you so much, Janine. Thanks for having me. Well, I'm excited about this one because I haven't really talked about life after menopause. And because I have no experience personally, I feel that I am not qualified to talk about this realm of life. And so I'm really excited to chat with you today. Now, of course, as I start most podcasts, I'm like, okay, we know you had a, your first book, right? And and you shared all about like, it's not you, it's your hormones, which can we, yes, yes, please, everyone needs to hear that. Um, but but really, you know, obviously, you had you had a journey, and there were some things you went through to to help create the insights into that book. And now your second book, Life After Menopause, I really would love to kind of hear the story of like, okay, how how did menopause play out for you? And what led you to like, oh, no, I have to get some help. And I got to write a book for folks to hear this story. Yeah, great question. I love this one. Um, I tell it a lot. But every time I tell it, it reminds me of why I'm doing this. So it's yeah. a great um, what place to start. So I was in my late 40s, uh, sorry, early 40s. Um, it's been so long ago now. <laughs> 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 but early 40s, I was in a corporate career working for a big company. I had two young kids. Usual, you know, midlife kind of hit 40 and then you're, you know, you're exhausted. You feel like you know, what life is one big to-do list. You're walking through treacle. And I had all of that stuff. And it, it just seemed to happen very quickly. And I wasn't my usual bubbly self. I couldn't find the joy, particularly in my children, because they were just a chore at that point, because I had so much on my plate. And we, we juggled, I mean, we, and I was a master juggler, but I was leaving all, everything out there and, and I had nothing left for myself. And I was miserable. And I just thought, OK, so it's my busy life. It can't be more than that. I had no idea about he me medical issues, health issues. Uh, I was in the corporate world. So I, I went to my doctor and I explained all my symptoms. You know, I was exhausted, stressed out, putting on weight, usual stuff. Mm -hmm. And he looked at me and he gave me a prescription, as many of them do. I'm sure they're getting better now. This is quite a while ago. Um, and it was Prozac. So that was the antidepressant of the day. And of course, yeah, I was a little bit upset. But, you know, I, I said, no, no, I don't think it's depression. I, I've never suffered before. I don't have it in my family. It's, it doesn't feel like it's, it's that, but I don't know what it is. And he said, well, that's all I've got kind of thing. So I walked out of the surgery, that appointment, and I just was baffled. I thought, well, hang on a minute. It's not this. I know it's not. And I, and, you know, this medication may help, but I don't think it's the right thing for me. Anyway, luckily for me, 
My dad uh, is a hormone doctor, a bit like ah. yourself. He is uh, a passionate believer in, in to, you know, he's been working with bioidenticals for a long, 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 long time, so ever since they were invented, I think. <laughs> I didn't know what hormones were back then. I didn't know what he did. I kind of just, I just, I didn't know what he did. So I had no idea. So I rang him up and I said, you know, dad, you're a doctor. What, what would you say with the, these symptoms that I've got? And he goes, oh, God, Nick, you're going through perimenopause. You're 42. And I said, I'm going, I'm doing what? <laughs> I'm doing what? <laughs> And uh, he said, yeah, Perry, and of course, you know, this is 15, 16 years ago, right? The word didn't exist back then. No. I'd never heard of it. I'd, I heard him say menopause and I just thought that happened when you were old and grey and over, you know, way older than I was. And I, I, you know, I was still having my periods. I, you know, my kids were young. No, that wasn't me. So I said, well, explain. I don't understand. So then he's, he gave me the education that I'd never received at school or uh -huh. at my own doctor or in magazines, nothing. There was nothing at, back then. Uh, you and you in the US were <laughs> slightly ahead of us here, as as usual, with your, with the, there were some people talking about hormones and, and there were some books, but of course they weren't on my radar. So he, he told me what was happening to my hormones, how I was, how they were changing. And I was like, wow, what's going on this is amazing this is so fascinating to me I got sort of kind of hooked at, onto you know all these these little chemical messengers running around our bodies and we definitely didn't learn that in biology um and I was okay okay I get it now I sort of under starting to understand and piece it together <laughs> excuse me so he said that you know you need to start looking after them I said oh okay so he went ran through my diet he looked at my stress my lifestyle supplements I was taking and he kind of created this thing for me and I started doing this making some changes and they weren't radical they were just small changes but I started feeling so much better the brain fog lifted the energy came back my moods were so much better and I just thought hang on a minute this is not rocket science but it's stuff that we don't know about so I um I I, dealt, I went down the rabbit hole I got really into it I started geeking out on hormones and science and I thought ah, you know I don't I'm not really enjoying my corporate job this is so much more interesting <laughs> so I decided to give it all up and go back to college and the next four years I learned about nutrition and hormones and in 2014 I launched my business Happy Hormones for Life we, and since then so that's uh, 10 years now um, we've been helping women with the education the empowerment and giving them tools to really be able to take control of their hormones and and really you know feel better than they than they ever could without that. So uh, I then wrote the book um, in 2017, so three years into cl clinical practice, because I couldn't reach that many people just doing the one to ones, and um, a lot of people couldn't necessarily afford it. So I said I've got to get this out there <laughs> in a much bigger way so that I can reach more people. And the book seemed like the obvious idea, and it just flew out of me and I, I think I wrote it in about eight weeks or something crazy so oh, wow. that book was easy um and then uh so so and that's the only thing I ever thought I'd ever need so I've got you know I've got my toolkit I'm in my 40s I'm in Perry I, I've got my toolkit it's working I feel brilliant excellent and then I'd hit 50 <laughs> and then I just these things started creeping in I started getting horrendous night sweats out of nowhere I was like, hang on a minute. I, you know, I, I've got this sussed. What, what's going on here? Um, again, I talked to my dad and he said, you know, Nick, you, you really, you're talking about, you know, let's, let's get your estrogen tested. Cause you know, you may be doing everything right, but there may be some things going on. So I, I, I did the, the test that we, we normally run the, the duct the urine tests. And uh, of course my estrogen was on the floor. My progesterone was non-existent. And also my mum had uh, just been diagnosed with osteoporosis. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, hang on a minute, I, um, you know, I know that has worked in my 40s, but I'm getting these symptoms that I've never had before. And I've got risks in my family. So and I and I've just tested my hormones and they're really low. So no wonder I'm starting to feel the, some, some extra symptoms that, that haven't been felt before. So I started on um, body identical. We call them here in the UK, um, which we can get on the NHS, which is our medical system um, for free. Uh, it's uh, I started on the estrogen gel and the utrogestan, which is micronized progesterone. So I knew the difference between synthetic and body identical, bioidentical. So I was very insistent. I went into my doctor and I said, I want to try this. 
And he looked at me blankly as if to say, like I was speaking another language because he had no idea what the difference was. He was trying to get me on this other stuff. And I go, no, 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 I want this. And um, it was a battle, but I got there. Uh, and I started to take it a very low dose to start and then sort of titrate up until I felt right. And, uh, and that's made a huge difference to me. So I've, in my 50s, I felt like the, the the landscape has changed for me. I've got different challenges. Uh, obviously, we've got aging thrown in, um, you know, more inflammation, all of that stuff. And you've got to sort of adapt and and um, a sort of change your toolkit a little bit to to adjust for the aging years and the different challenges that we face. And that's how I felt uh, going into my 50s. And I'm, I'm now in my sort of later 50s. And I'm sure it's going to change again in my 60s. But um that's the thing I didn't quite realize in my 40s. I thought I'd got it sussed for life. And so I never thought there'd be another book coming along. And then halfway through my 50s, and I'm going through a sort of midlife transition, as well as the physical kind of challenges of aging. I think there's this whole kind of emotional transition that you have to go through of finding yourself again, rediscovering what lights you up, what, having a look at your purpose again, making sure you're doing more things that that give you joy making sure that you know you're upping your self care all those things as well they they become more important as you get older and I, I think um writing this book has really really helped me kind of get all that down on paper the changes i've made to my 40s toolkit um mm -hmm. because actually it's just it's not just about hormones anymore it's there's this whole other stuff going on that we have to deal with and so it becomes a much bigger kind of jigsaw puzzle, if you like. As I always, I always talk to my clients about um, your health is kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. Yours is going to be so different from anyone else's. Your picture is going to be different. Each piece you've got to sort of work out for yourself which pieces fit together and work for you because everybody's so different, and and it's going to be a different toolkit for everybody. Um, so that's what I'm sort of uh, trying to get across to people, giving them lots of options, but making sure they're picking the right things that work for them and not saying that this cookie cutter kind of one size fits all thing, which we all know doesn't exist. So there we go. <laughs> Potted history. Oh, my goodness. It's, you know, it's funny how the cookie cutter thing comes into play because we we do try to find the magic pill, the one thing, the this, the that. And and unfortunately, yeah, I'm starting to notice like well, through the trajectory of my own experience with perimenopause and, you know, getting closer, closer, closer to to menopause. I'm noticing like, yeah, this, the symptoms shift, the needs shift, the hormones definitely shift. And there is like a point at which I'll see people like holding on. OK, and then just boom. The hormones just drop off and oftentimes it happens after the period stops. I'm curious yeah. if this happened to you, like period stopped, you're like, all right, I'm cruising. And then all of a sudden just wall. Totally coincided with that. You know, my cycle stopped for that year. I was officially post-menopause and then the night sweats just kicked in straight away. It was like, you know, my ovaries kind of just went, yeah, had it done, done. <laughs> Yeah, they're like checked out by. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's funny how that happens. And I'm starting to see that right now because I, I've been lucky enough to see patients for over 10 years in one same place. So I'm seeing everybody's trajectory and I'm like, oh, OK, shoot. OK, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it now. Yeah. It's, you know, the big thing, because unfortunately or fortunately, I mean, I, I love that the word's getting out about hormones. But we're also creating the media, I suppose I, I could say, is creating something of a you get the hormones problem solved. Like you just get the hormones and you problem solved. Are you seeing that in the folks that are coming into your programs as well? Oh, totally, totally. And, you know, with the whole awareness thing that's happened over the last five to six, seven years, uh, you know, celebrities talking about it openly now. And we've had a massive campaign here in the UK to to bring awareness to HRT and the benefits of it, because our, our doctors here are really don't have any training on it. So they, they kind of don't know. And women's health, as you know, is so down down the bottom of the pile that especially older women's health, that's even further down. So um, it's not been given the attention it, it deserves, you know, despite the fact that we're half the population, but we won't. We could spend a whole hour <laughs> talking about that. Um, but yeah. yes, so uh, massive campaigns, massive awareness, ma which is amazing for women to find out, you know, I had my dad in my life, which was really fortunate, but you know, the average woman does not have any expertise mm. around to ask for help. So books are important, awareness is important. But with that has come a very much a um, HRT is the miracle cure. You only need to do that, get everybody on it, and you're fine. And it's this kind of mass broad 
brush stroke of every woman needs it. Um, and you're, you're absolutely fine if you take, you know, that's all you need. You don't have to worry about anything else. So, so my message now has become more about, you know, yes, I, 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 for the perimenopause, it wasn't, it didn't really involve HRT because I kind of didn't need it at that time. And, and a, a lot of the things that you're going through in peri can be managed naturally. However, um, you know, with this, with this new awareness of HRT, all of that's kind of like, yeah, well, we don't need to bother changing our diet or exercising or doing anything else because we've got this, this thing and it's going to clear everything up. And for a small majority of a minority of women, it actually does do that. And they don't, yeah. they're just the lucky ones, aren't they? But, but for the majority, I think they either, well, yes, they, they might do better. A lot of, a lot of women are doing better on it, but they're not quite there. They're not hundred percent or they're doing worse on it and it's because it's not the right format dose or it's not even right for them. So so there's this whole spectrum, if you like, of, of, of HRT, but it's suddenly become, well, you, you take it or don't, you know, don't take it because you can't kind of thing. There's no sort of gray areas. And and because of that, it's become quite divisive. And, and, and I what I really hate seeing is women arguing with each other. And this is just, um, it's it's become a kind of, yeah, us versus them type scenario, which is the worst that can happen because you know we all need to support each other and stick together and stand up for each other. Uh, and um, there's been, you know, it's been quite divisive this whole HLT thing, uh, yeah. and people getting quite angry about it. And and I'm just in the middle, going, hey, there's room for everybody. You know, we 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 need HLT, yeah. we need natural solutions. We need there's a whole spectrum in between, and it's for every woman to be empowered and informed enough to make that choice for herself. That's the important thing. It's not about who's right and who's wrong here. It's about giving women the information they need to make their own minds up, and that's it. I couldn't have said it better. I couldn't have said it better. I mean, it's just a, a lot of people are like, but you're a naturopath, but you but you like bioidenticals. What's wrong with you? You know, no, it's it's what works, right? First and foremost, what works? What gets someone their life back? That's my first thing. And That's and and the comprehensive approach, because I do find that it's not just one magical pill, as you've noticed. And especially with with your new book, because you've got the embrace protocol, which I love because it takes everything into into account here because yeah we're oh it just kills me with society in this like one hit wonder thing man we just want that one thing the easiest thing and and i get it but at the same time i'm like why well <laughs> when you look at all the things that we need to look at as we get older you realize that you know hrt is so limited isn't it because it's only what is it doing it's just replacing two or well, maybe three hormones that's it well we've you know we've got lots and lots and lots of hormones that are doing their thing and and getting older we've got um inflammation raging we've got disease coming at us and risks of disease coming at us so we've got to do more than just take a pill we've got to look at our whole life um and 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 look at every aspect of it that impacts our health and that's pretty much everything to be honest uh, and the more i research the book the more i realize that oh my goodness there's so many things that impact our health from your thoughts to your your the the you know how much you move every day and how stressed and re how your stress resilience is working because of you know we can't just get rid of stress emotions you know work stress technology there's so many things that impact us and and how long we live and this whole longevity thing and of course it's moved now from lifespan to health span as you know it's all about how we age better because at you know, for a woman here, the life expectancy is now 83. I'm not sure what it is in the US, but I'm sure it's similar. And, you know, we're not living uh, very well up until that age, you know. Um, and uh, I think the stats in the US are worse than they are here. But I'm sure uh, it, it's uh, it, it, it need, you need to be focusing on this now in midlife so that you can maximize those years because. If you think about it, if your average menopause is at 52 and you've got till 80, that's another 30 plus years, potentially, that's that's almost half a lifetime. That's, that's huge. It's a huge amount of time and it's a massive possibility for you to start doing something amazing for yourself and start, you know, like I, I watched one of your um, Instagram reels on, you know, transforming that metamorphosis. It's amazing. You know, what a poss what an opportunity we have in that latter stage of our life to really make those years count and really focus on ourselves for once, because most women have been looking after other people all their lives. True. 
and you know and, and I'm sure that you know there are some people who have still have to care, care for people but it's also an opportunity to to have a bit more freedom and and make use and really really use that wisdom that we've gained and it, it's a huge opportunity and, and all I see in in society is you know trashing older women and and the the ageism that is rife for particularly for older women and it's we've got to fight that as well as our aging bodies and perceptions and all of that so there's a lot that goes into kind of managing that and making sure you're on top of it and and you're really uh, yeah putting yourself in a position to really max out those those years and and make them count absolutely absolutely i i think i've kind of gone in the same direction as you like okay yes menopause hormones important now let's let's help everybody for that yes however many years you 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 get to live you know this life and it's it's so important to have the foundations down too and yeah. even if you didn't get them younger now is the time I, th I think you know we also have that I idea of like oh it's i've given up you know like i i've wasted and i know i've done this too gone like oh, i've wasted how many years now i'm 46 oh geez you know it's over yes it's like, yes but that's where the the, the attitude comes in because yeah. Um, you can always change your thoughts. You can always change your attitudes to things. And that's really, really important in, in managing this next phase of our lives is to reframe aging for yourself and for others around you because a positive outlook on aging can itself increase your life by eight years, it's been shown. So just having an attitude, a different attitude about how you're aging is, is huge. It's a big piece in that in that um, protocol of getting your own sort of jigsaw puzzle is, is your attitude. So so that's a big piece um, because we know that, you know, negative thoughts and, and pessimism can can really shorten your life, um, which is in, in, incredible, isn't it, to, to, to think that. But it, it's really true. So um, it's so mind blowing how much the thought process, you know, I've really only come awake to that in the last few years. And it's mind-blowing every single day when you know you catch yourself right because it's easy to go down the route and you're like dang I'm doing it again I'm doing it yeah. again you yeah. know and I know I'm not alone so it's definitely something to be thinking about so I would love to hear how you're incorporating it into your programs but also into your book life after menopause because I think this is so important to think about as we've already talked about what what is life after menopause what what can we achieve what can we do how does this work you know <laughs> what's what's our own guidebook how are we going to write this so give us give us a scoop on the embrace protocol when i was um writing the book there was sort of it was the ideas and the 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 themes were 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 falling into different areas of this kind of jigsaw as i was doing it and i just noticed and i was constantly aware of the word embrace because I really wanted to fit it into how we approached this next section um, of our lives. Hold well, that thought. It's time for a word from our sponsors. One of my biggest frustrations pretty much for most of my life was figuring out my metabolism. But boy, when I started to go through perimenopause, things got out of hand and I really became frustrated. And it seems like everybody's got a solution for what to do about your weight. And then Honestly, I really believe that we're all unique. And this is where I love the Lumen because it helped me to understand my metabolism once and for all because I could use carbon dioxide from my own breath to determine if I was in carb or fat burn. And it helped me to understand what exactly was happening with food in my body, the different combinations, what worked best, and especially how long I could fast and when not to fast, and also what happened when I didn't sleep well and what happened when I was stressed out. So I highly recommend checking out the Lumen. Use code HEALTHFIX for $50 off. All right, let's get back to the podcast. And um, so, so, I, so I went through the different sections and they kind of just fell naturally into the word embrace. So the E of embrace is eat well. Now I'm a nutritionist by trade, so I'm gonna put food uh, in there and it comes up first in this instance, but it's not always um, the first thing. But for me, it is super important to be eating well as, as you get older, your, you know, your food or your nutrients, they nourish every cell in the body. So if your body's aging, you've got to feed it uh, uh, good aging anti-aging foods as I call them so we've got to you know I'm not going to go through nutrition to your listeners because I'm sure they know 
all of that stuff it's not rocket science but you know aging foods that we've got to sort of limit like sugar and the refined carbs and all of that stuff that impact our metabolism and our insulin resistance and all of that stuff the alcohol I don't know about you but a lot of my friends are kind of reducing or giving up because it just doesn't fit anymore with their 50s 60s kind of approach um I'm doing my best but I'm not quite there yet <laughs> uh the you know the bad fats the processed foods all of that stuff And then we really want to concentrate and really fill our plates with those healthy aging foods, you know, the good protein, protein, so, so important as we get older, because we're losing muscle mass at the faster rate. So getting that protein in healthy fats, all good. We don't need to worry about, you know, the low fats anymore, unless you have a problem met metabolizing fat, but you know, you want to get those healthy fats in for your body. And then the good quality carbs, making sure you're not, you're on uh, your blood sugar is nice and stable. So all of that, I'm sure everybody knows getting those new micronutrients in the plant nutrients. Um, and then I have sort of, sort of some longevity kind of superfoods that kept coming up over and over again in my research. One of them was uh, berries um, because we know how many antioxidants, flavonoids and polyphenols they have in them. And these, all of these things fight inflammation and they give you antioxidants to fight radical free radicals as well. So we know that that can help with uh, living longer and healthier. In fact, I think there was a study that showed that people who ate berries regularly saw a 21% lower risk of mortality from any cause compared with those who didn't. And it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't strawberries or blue, blueberries and strawberries were great, but actually the biggest reduction was with cranberries. So that's really, really interesting for me because I've not, not really th seen that before in a study. The no. other category of foods like beans are uh, really staple of the blue zone diets that, that have been researched extensively powerhouse of nutrients in there as well and again they've got around a seven percent drop in mortality for every 20 grams eaten so really good foods for longevity nuts and seeds uh, eggs cruciferous vegetables we know are so good for our hormones and our liver olive oil um, the smash fish you know the salmon mackerel anchovies sardines and herring which are so rich in epa and dha omega-3 fats and they're the lowest in mercury because they're the smaller fish And then hmm. gut health foods and being hydrated. So that's the kind of um, overall kind of dietary guidelines for getting uh, all those nutrients in to, to help you age better. So that's the E. Hmm. The M is move. And that I've put move daily. So, of course, modern life makes us more and more sedent sedentary. And studies show that if you're sedentary for uh, over 12 hours a day, you face a 38% risk, increased risk of death compared to those who have a sedentary time of less than eight hours. So the more we sit, the, the less longer we're going to live, basically, is that equation. So you've got to move. And it's not just exercise. That's great. But it's daily movement. It's you know, that neat, that non-exercise -exer activity thermogenesis. And that's just, you know, moving around, sitting, taking more breaks from standing and just not not necessarily formal exercise, but not sitting. So that's the middle bit. Um, And then you've got, you know, my three kind of bases for, for movement are sweat, strengthen and stretch. Uh, the three S's, um, sweating because that's great for your cardio health, but it's detoxing and it's a good for your immune system as well. And that can just be, you don't have to sweat in a gym. You can go for a walk up a hill or a brisk walk <laughs> in this heat here in the UK. Now I'm sweating just talking to you. So <laughs> it's, you know, it's whatever makes you sweat. You can sit in a sauna as well. Um, But, you know, strengthen is, is so, so important. That's the bit where we're we're really um, adding to our muscle mass because well, we're not adding to it. Actually, we're maintaining it, aren't we? Because the rate at which we're losing it, we're just fighting just to maintain it uh, kind of at, the, at my age. Um, and that's really, really important. I think a lot of women have resistance to resistance, if you like. They they don't feel like, um, it, you know, strength training is for, for girls and for women. And I, I th I'm, I'm seeing that change now. Yeah. But um, especially for my generation, I think there's um, a real reticence to kind of do weightlifting. Um, and I, uh, I'm just pushing it as much as I can because it's not that hard. You don't have to go to a gym and lift weights. You can do squats or lunges at home. You can get resistance bands. You can do kind of active pilates if you like which which works your muscles um you know dynamic yoga does the same thing and you know just running up and down the stairs will do it too so yeah. you do something that kind of works for you but you are working on those muscles so important because it it's the base of your metabolism as well so you know all of that's good and then stretching so good for mo mobility balance and and avoiding those risk of falls as you get older um 
So, uh, you know, I wish my mum had known all this because she has osteoporosis. And then she only found out because she fell out of her car in the supermarket car park. She was just sitting oh, no. in her mini and her mini is only this much off the ground. She oh, no. fell out and she got her leg trapped in the seatbelt because she hadn't put it back properly. And she just kind of fell down about a foot to the floor, smashed her hip into smithereens. Um, and they said, well, hang on, you've only just fallen like this. And she had really bad osteoporosis, but she had no clue. There was no testing or anything. So, um, you know, I, I think, to, and, and that was a long, long period in hospital with lots of physiotherapy and recovery. And to, we have to try and avoid that because it's not only a nasty operation, um, but you're in hospital for a long time. You're immobile for a long time. Uh, and you're at massive risk of of more fractures and also uh, anything else you can pick up in hospital too. There's there's um there's quite a risk of going in and kind of not you know not coming out the same anyway. But so yeah, so that so keeping mobile and of course yoga is great for that. Pilates, tai chi, stretching, any kind of stretchy um stretching of your muscles is is good for that kind of stuff. And then we've got to look after our pelvic floor as well. We mustn't forget about that because yeah, those muscles kind of hold you up hold everything in place and they're really important for your back um for you know staying uh staying away from things like leaking um prolapse all that sort of stuff so really important for your quality of age as, as you as you get older and a lot not a huge amount of women know about their pelvic, pelvic floor or know how to look after it as well so it's really important to get that knowledge across too um but that pretty much wraps up move nice nice you know i mean the pelvic floor discussion, I mean, we're getting there. I, I have two lovely gals, Kim Vopney and Dr. Brian Grogan. I mean, they've been game changers for a lot of my patients, but also for, for me to just learn, right? And then now the devices. I just tried this crazy thing called the V-Tone. It looks like a teardrop. Oh. It, have you tried this? Have you heard of it? No, not heard of it. No. Oh, my goodness. Like, it inserts vaginally. And so you're like, okay, this is interesting. And then there's it's, like, connected to a radio frequency, like, pulse d like device and like i never felt my pelvic floor like that before i was like whoa this thing's impressive so i th i think we're really getting there and i think if we could we could just keep spreading the word like yes pelvic floor because nobody oh. wants to like diaper situation like come on oh no one wants that and it's quite difficult actually to do the do like excess pelvic floor exercises properly without straining yeah. something else or doing it wrong, which can make it actually worse. So these little devices are, you know, you, they can be game changers, I'm sure. Yeah. 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 Just fun stuff. All right. So so we've got we finished that move. We got balance, rest, activate, connect, and, and eliminate. We got some more stuff there. What else are you doing yeah. with folks? So balance, I'm gonna skip over because that's kind of you've done that's about your hormones basically. So yes, hormones are important, but they're only a small part of this whole protocol. And you know, uh, you've got enough stuff on hormones, but it's all about balancing. I have a I have I talk a lot about the feisty four hormones, which are cortisol, insulin, thyroid, and estrogen, the four hormones that kind of if you get though in control of those if you get those balanced you're pretty much there you know so if we can just focus on those four it makes it a little less overwhelming when we're talking about hormones in general but we've talked about hrt it's it's important for a lot of women but not for everyone and you've got to look after those hormones um as best you can and you know there are many many ways of doing that i could talk to you about that for a long mm -hmm. time you know you, you teach this stuff as well so we're gonna i'm gonna skip over b um and i'm gonna go straight on to r which is rest rest enough and this is all about stress management because we know that stress is for me in my clinic it's the number one indicator of how well you're going to go through perimenopause the, the more stressed you are the more symptoms seem to correlate for me hmm. and it didn't really register until I'd had that clinical experience because I always thought it was about food but whew, no it's about stress isn't it oh my goodness um, and I think that's why we're having so many problems with our hormones, because we're just not resting enough and we're not switching off enough and we're all too hyper. Um, I don't know if you've heard of um, Sandra Dalton-Smith. Um, she's done an amazing TED talk and she talks about the seven types of rest. Um, so I've stolen those from her with her permission. Um, and, I, and I talk about those in the books. I think they're really important because when we think about rest, we might think about sitting on the sofa, watching Netflix or, you know, going on a, a spa day once in a while or, or, or just taking a holiday. And it, it's just not enough. We need to be switching off daily. And there are seven types of rest that she talks about that are that are that that makes us think a little bit about the types of switch off we need. She talks about obviously physical rest, meaning sleep and, and physical relaxation, which is so important. So 
we know how, how important sleep is, but getting that enough sleep, but also making sure that we, we have periods where we're relaxing. So that could be just reading your book or, you know, meditating or whatever you want to do for that. Mental rest is is that stress, work stress, potentially um, commit your over commitments, you know, all of that stuff uh that is just taxing your brain so you need a brain break every every so often um and that that can be lots of different things to different people we've got we've got sensory rest which is switching off technology screens noise light might be going to lie in your lie in a dark room for a little bit we've got creative rest where we can just reinvigorate our creativity you know spend time in nature appreciating beauty that kind of stuff art uh we've got emotional rest which is about you know stopping that whole people pleasing thing that we do um that need for approval uh they getting used to saying no those types of things and then social rest where it, you know we can get bombarded by by social activities too so that's like um making sure your connections are really positive ones so spending more time with people you love that lift you up and less time with people who don't and then you, the last one is spiritual rest which is nice too and that's reconnecting with either you know your religion or your um whatever you believe in the universe or divine or whatever it is and also your kind of passion and purpose um so you're connected to something bigger than you in this world and i think that's really important as well and whether you do that through prayer meditation or volunteering or whatever it is that works for you i think that that's a really part a key part of resting as well so so those are the kind of things that I think we need to look at and maybe maybe if you think you, you're doing your meditation every day or you, you sleep well maybe there's another aspect of rest that you kind of haven't thought of that you probably need to address that's pushing up your cortisol and making things a little bit more more challenging so I, I like the way she's incorporated all those different aspects that's cool. That's cool. We'll have to link to her too here in the podcast notes at drjcrossnd.com because yeah, the, the seven types of rest are really important. So cool. So the next one is kind of for the for the a little bit, if you want to go a little bit deeper, it's activate your protective pathways. So, you know, we've got a lot of things that are happening as we, we're aging, things like senescence and inflammaging um, and, you know, wonky nutrient signaling and dna damage there's all sorts of things that 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 the aging process incorporates kind of the pillars of aging if you like so um there's quite a bit we can do to actually support these pillars and make sure they're not aging us too quickly so some of these uh involve things like heat and light and cold therapy uh things that you might not have th thought of but you're maybe or you may be doing but didn't realize what they were doing for you mm -hmm. so things like heat pro heat therapy like saunas and things like that where your um, body is producing like heat shock proteins and they can repair, help repair like damaged proteins in the body. Um, they can also act as like antioxidants and reduce that glycation, the sticky uh, proteins that cause inflammation. Um, and, and so heat shock proteins and on the other side, cold shock proteins are doing a similar thing as well. And they can help uh, strengthen your immune system as well. So heat and cold are really lovely ways to, kind of activate these pathways and get some more protection on your side. Uh, light therapy as well. And I know I've looked into red light therapy, which is fairly new in the wellbeing space, but it's getting a lot of accolades um, using the power of infrared rather than heat uh, to rejuvenate your cells. So again, you can do that on your face or your whole body. Um, I believe there's dental devices now and, and even vaginal yeah. ones as well. So yeah. Yeah, I think there's going to be a device for everything. So <laughs> probably. <laughs> watch out for that um and then the next one to kind of activate um your your protective pathways uh, the big area is fasting of course lots of people are talking about fasting these days um but it activates something called um auto autophagy i think that's the way you say it <laughs> um it boosts your mitochondria um it reduces oxidative stress and all kinds of other things and helps with inflammation too so it's a really good way of switching on those pathways without too much disruption, if, especially if you do the overnight fasting, which is I know is, a, is one of the more easiest ways to fast. Um, so, you know, you go to you, you have a sort of 12 to 16 hour window between dinner and breakfast. Not suitable for everyone, I must say, um, particularly if you're if you've got adrenal or thyroid issues or you've, you're underweight or you've got hormonal issues. I'm sure you've seen um, examples of where women just don't thrive on fasting. So. Don't do it if you feel any symptoms with it. If it makes you feel great, you know, stick to it. But but people, again, people have been, it, it's one of those issues where it's a it's kind of a miracle thing or it's been 
everyone must do it. It's one, it's, you know, it's going to help everyone. Well, you know, it doesn't, this is, there's a spectrum again. Um, so uh, I want people to be aware that it's a tool, but it doesn't have to be used uh, by everybody. Yep. And then um, supplements can be super helpful to activate those protective pathways. And there's a whole range of supplements that are available now uh, that, you know, can um, can help us, I suppose, or support us as we as we're getting older. I won't go into all of that because that is a, a whole day's topic. <laughs> Possibly a week. Yes, that's a, that's a big a one. Yeah, yeah. So so that's where I've, I've lumped supplements in the activate se section, um, although I do recommend uh, some very basic ones for most people. So um, it's not necessarily a, a deeper therapy, if you like. Um, and then the C is connect. And this is where we are looking at the, this emotion, our emotional health, really um, looking at, you know, human connection, which we, uh, you know, have struggled with, actually, particularly since the pandemic, you know, we've really uh the, the 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 phrase friends recession has been coined you know social fitness is something we all talk about now and it's uh it's become uh an issue that, that a lot of people are struggling with loneliness is 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 off the scale in terms of numbers now um particularly in the uk for some reason we really struggle here uh yeah. i don't know why but we're we're the worst in europe definitely so um, whether it's just, you know, chatting to strangers or, or really connecting deeply with your kind of close loved ones, it, there's a whole spectrum again of, of where we need to connect. And it's not just, you know, with our partners, it's, it's right down from, you know, saying hello to people in the coffee shops. Um, there's so much evidence now that that helps us. So, um, we are wired for human connections. So we need to nurture those connections and really seek out more deeper connections where possible, um, to be able to feel uh, more emotionally stable and happy uh, because connection makes us happy. So that's the human connection. You know, we've also t lost a lot of our connection to nature. It's super important spending time outside, it, you know, decreases stress, it lowers our blood pressure, improves our mood, and, and it's also good for brain health. So we need fresh air, we need light daylight particularly to produce serotonin and melatonin in our sleep wake cycle we we really benefit from being near water occasionally and that's really calming for our nervous system and we have the earth connection as well which was interesting when i was researching it um i came across a lot about gardening i think i, I know you've posted about this too about how how beneficial it is how how um soothing it is almost coming in contact and that's because you're coming in contact with the earth um mm. and you know you're able to absorb those and electrons which which can help neutralize free radicals whether you you know it or not but it's a really good way of staying younger and it's no wonder that it becomes more popular as we get older i think that's just your body telling you you need to get out there and get your hands dirty and get your hands into the ground oh absolutely. um yeah connection to our food we've lost as well you know we've con convenience foods we we don't know where they're coming from we don't sit down and eat together anymore we don't cook it in our, you know, there's a lot of disconnection with our food. So really sort of reconnecting with our food, you know, really just visiting more farmers markets, maybe growing, growing your own, just dabbling. You don't have to do the whole thing. You don't have to be self-sufficient, but just having an idea of where it's coming from helps. And I think also social eating is so, so important. Just getting together and making sure you're eating with others. And if you can't, then maybe getting out um, to a cafe or something where you actually got other people around you, even if you're not with them. But it, it has been shown to really, really support your health as you get older. And then spiritually connected, we've talked about <laughs> the rest element, but, you know, finding that connection to whatever you believe in really helps you to deal with stress. It increases your, your resilience, it helps you find community as well and purpose. Um, and then connection to yourself. So, so important, that self um, awareness, uh, self-acceptance, such a crucial part of, of aging, particularly for women as we see changes to our bodies and, you know, accepting that, but also, um, you know, making sure you're aware of why it's happening, but also, you know, quantifying your needs, making sure you've got those in place, looking at, you know, your whole self-development, really, you know, looking at your inner critics, you're bound, putting boundaries in place, you know, you, um, shaking up your routine, staying present, practicing gratitude. All those are tools. I've got a lot more in the book, but I won't go through them all. But they are tools that we can use to really get to know ourselves better. Because once you get to, once you know yourself really well, you're going to know what makes you happy 
and what makes you fulfilled and that's going to be a key theme in 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 that latter stages the next few years and making sure they 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 are everything you want them to be so important so important yeah the the connection thing you know you mentioned we've lost that absolutely with since the pandemic i see that too so many people just lonely lost it's huge but also connecting to yourself like finding out like who who are you and what do you really want to do like what lights you up I thought I find that the most fun to watch people kind of rediscover themselves let's put it that way totally yeah yeah uh, I'm doing a lot of that myself too so I think we're all on this journey of trying to work out what brings us joy and just getting trying to get more of it in our lives because we realize mm -hmm. how important it is and then the last one is E, which is um, I've devoted to gut health and liver health. So it's eliminate and def defend, which is your gut and liver and your immune system, because these are kind of the unsung heroes almost of our bodies and the systems. Um, they're absolutely crucial for keeping us healthy now, but also in the future. And because gut health is not just about digestion, it's, you know, it's a whole ecosystem that's supporting the whole body. Uh, it's our second brain, um, it's our control center, it's controlling inflammation, it's controlling immune system, it's controlling how your hormones are produced and work, um, your mental health, all of it. So uh, it's so, so important to support your gut with the right foods, the prebiotic foods, the probiotic foods, lots of fiber, lots of plant nutrients, you know, limiting those food stresses so that your body can, um, your gut can work properly. Stress management, because that's really, really bad for your gut. Uh, and then oral health as well, making sure you're looking after your 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 teeth and your your gums because that's really important too. And then the liver uh, does a huge job. It does over like something like 500 jobs. Um, <laughs> and it you know if you don't look after your liver, it can lead to really bad metabolism, hormone imbalances, increased risk of disease. Really, so uh, we are exposed to huge chemical soup in modern life. We've got plastics we've got chemicals that have just been accumulated over the last hundred years or so in everything that we buy we put on ourselves and the air we breathe the food we eat all that stuff so it's really important to kind of be aware of that but not get overwhelmed by it and and just do what you can to minimize the plastics the fragrances the pesticides uh and look after your liver that way and make keep sure make sure you're totally hydrated and you're eating those veg that are good for your liver the cruciferous and the bitter veg um doing your sweating and your saunas and making sure you're sleeping well and those all of those things will help your liver um and also you know watching your alcohol i didn't mention that one but that's a key one it's it's <laughs> one that you know like like you mentioned earlier a lot of friends you have are, are noticing having trouble with it i myself yeah i can't do it like yeah. min like minimal amounts if I yeah. even because at this point I'm like mm. just told my yes husband yesterday I'm like yeah I don't even really not interested yeah. anymore because I just don't yeah because you know the, the 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 payoff the cost of it is so much more than it used to be the cost is mm -hmm. you know you can wipe the whole day out can't you the next day because you just don't feel good and then in in the past you could probably so yeah, I, I don't mind doing that. I'm going to have a great time. But if you don't have the great time and then you're still getting the cost, it, mm, no, and then it starts yeah. getting like a silly equation. <laughs> it's it's wild. It's wild. And you know, I mean, you you have to at some point though look at like, okay, the liver side of that. And like, I do find that when folks do start to hit a wall with drinking alcohol, I'm always like, okay, we got to look at your liver metabolism. You know, yeah. what's, what's happening yeah. there. And that's probably one of the big things that I had to you know, face is like, okay, yeah, there's some things going on, toxic, you know, microbiome. It's huge. And you imagine the accumulation of the stuff over the years, it's just going to, it gets worse and worse. And that's why as we get older, I mean, the liver's going, oh, you know, I just can't cope with everything that you're putting in me. So something's got to go. And right. it's usually the alcohol, but, um, but yeah. yeah. So, and then lastly, the immune system, because that's what's keeping us strong and, you know, keeping us protected um and you know it helps us with a lot of these aging pathways as well so we want to you know nutrient dense anti-inflammatory antioxidant rich diet we want to again manage our stress because that has an impact uh our gut health and you know certain supplements as well so there's a whole there's a whole thing a big kind of uh lots and lots and lots of information but it's picking out what works for you and in your life and your lifestyle and what you can physically do as well because not you can't do all of this this is not meant to be 
you know, do it all, because I'm certainly not doing it all. I'm just putting it out there for you to just pick and cherry pick, if you like, pick and mix what works for you. And so that you can like have a bit more information to put your own protocols together. Um, and even if it's just taking one piece from each section and starting there, then you are moving forward and you're taking those baby steps uh, and, and that alone can make you feel better already. So any little part of this that you start doing is going to be beneficial in the long run. Oh, I have no doubt. I have no doubt. I mean, I think unfortunately we're all back to the all and or nothing kind of society yeah. or the one one hit wonder or one magic pill. I mean, we do think that there's like going to be that one thing, but sometimes it's a synergistic effect of multiple things and finding what what you like. Because I I've also had and you've probably seen this too, where people come to you and they're like, I'm doing all the things, but they're stressed out by all the things, and yes. you're like maybe maybe there's something maybe there's a a lower level that actually your body will feel actually better at yeah because we all want to be perfect don't we we want to try and do everything perfectly that's a whole female trait isn't it the yeah. perfectionism thing and um yeah and it can come to health as well we want to do it perfectly but in trying to do it perfectly you're massively stressing your system out and your nervous system is just going no, I'm not going to let that. And it doesn't progress. It doesn't give you the results you're looking for because it's saying, no, I don't, you know, I can't, I can't deal with that. You, that's the wrong way to approach it. But it's often, you don't, you don't hear that message. You hear the message, oh, you're not doing enough or you're not doing it well enough. And, you know, we, we, we just trash talk ourselves, don't we? And we say, you know, you're not good enough. It's, oh, it's another thing you're failing at. And all of these things that again, because we're negative talk to ourselves is it, having the reverse effect. So, We've got to be kind to ourselves and we've got to realize that we can't do it all. We can't do it all perfectly. So just a little bit and baby steps and do what you can and do what makes you feel good and just start there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well said. So of course, I always have a question when when there's a book and there's a protocol. I like to see what the author's aha moment was out of the whole protocol. What was like your favorite thing that you discovered about yourself that was part of part of this protocol that you're like, oh, wow, I really need this or oh, I really love this aspect of the protocol. Well, uh, there's there's several actually. It's like picking your children, isn't it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Where's my favorite child? I think um, the cold water thing was a revelation to me because I have always been an absolute worse at getting into the water anywhere uh, if it's cold, if it's colder than like 20 something degrees. So for me, that was like something I'm going to write about it, but I'm never going to do it. And then uh, I, I joined a local gym and they had this new brand new spa and in it was a cold plunge pool. Nice. And I said, no, I'm not, I'm not doing, I'm not the girl who does that. So I'm going to go in the sauna and get really warm. And uh, I'm just going to walk past it and just walk out. And um, one day I was with my sister and she's come on, look, you've got this amazing thing. You've written about it. it. You've researched it. You know how good it is for you. And she said, just go in. So anyway, I put my foot in. Ugh, no way. Uh, and it took me about eight weeks. I slowly, every time I went, I put another body part in and I got sort of the next week I was up to my knees. The following week I got up to my thighs without, you know, before I freaked out. And then and now I'm I'm able to get in there and sit there for five good five minutes. Wow. And I am so proud of myself that I didn't give up. And I honestly feel I can understand why people get those endorphins when they come out because you feel amazing. And I, I feel like I've just been kind of cleansed somehow. It's incredible the feeling you get. And I'm just glad I kind of pers persevered because I, I, I'm i so not that person. <laughs> so um, I think that for me was, I, I don't think I'd have done it if I hadn't have researched the benefits for the book and realized how good it is and what the body does and why it does it. And, you know, I've got to use every tool in the book for, for helping me age. And, you know, if I can get over this one and the rest seems quite easy. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, I've had patients ask me, like, D do you have to do the cold plunging? And I'm yeah. like, you know, I, yeah. I it's hard for me. You know, it isn't I don't like being cold. It's not mm. it's not I'm going to always divert to like the hot rock and like, you know, <laughs> whatever yeah. I can do to get hot. Yeah. Warm. The thing is, you don't the thing is, you don't need to go as far as you don't have to die, get, get into an ice bath. You can just turn the shower down a little bit and make it a little bit cooler five, you know, 10, 20 seconds every morning, just try and get your body used to a little bit of a colder shower. That will help. That will help. And then you can kind of progress from there if you want to. So 
you don't have to go to a plush spa with an ice bath. Although, I mean, it does sound a lot better than some of the folks in my local area who are dipping in the Puget Sound, which I'm like, nope, not going to do it. You guys aren't going to get me. Uh, but oh, yeah. no, nope. I need I need no. to know what's underneath me. If I'm one, if I'm going in it too, if it's cold, forget it. I need to know yeah. if there's not critters. Yeah, that open water swimming, swimming sounds so romantic, but our local river is full of sewage. So I don't think that's very nice. No, <laughs> it's really no. putting me off. no. I yeah, it, the cold shower. I, I like the cold shower in the spa. That sounds amazing. Yeah. I may I may try it at that point. Yeah. Oh my goodness, Nikki. So we gotta tell we gotta talk to we gotta tell folks about your programs too, because you've quite the team that helps you out. And and so we've got the book, and then folks could that you know dip their toes in no totally pun intended there um with the book and then they can work with you guys give us give us a scoop on your programs and and working with your team yeah so we have been helping women for the last 10 years in our clinic we do functional testing and um, we do a lot of one-to-one -one support um so yeah you can just go come over to happyhormonesforlife.com um go to the contact page and i can send you a whole load of information on how we work um particularly beneficial if you're in the UK because uh, obviously um a lot of the tests are UK only um but uh we do uh, this, we do support generally over zoom everything we do is online so uh, we can help that way and then yeah the books and the, um, I've got a master free stuff lots of free resources too so yeah go to the website check it out press start here and then you'll see everything in front of you all right and we also have the happy hormones podcast can't forget that yes that's Anywhere you can get podcasts, correct? That's everywhere. Everywhere. It's the Happy Hormones podcast. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Nikki, thank you so much for coming on today and chatting all about your book, which we also have to remind folks, it's Life After Menopause, because I think there's so many books on menopause, or not menopause really, but perimenopause and hormone balancing, yeah. but Life After, Aging Well. Yeah. That's that's my but, jam yeah. here. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Oh, goodness. Thank you so much again. I really appreciate it. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Hey, fellow health junkie. Thanks for listening to the Health Fix podcast. If you enjoyed tuning in, please help support me to get the word out about the podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review, and just get that word out. Thanks again for listening.